You found this podcast probably because you know a little bit about our ministry called Time of Grace and our passion about connecting people to God through all kinds of media. Well, did you know that we do a lot more besides just television and podcasting? If you check out our website, timeofgrace.org, you're going to find tons of ways to learn about the good news of Jesus, from daily written devotions to daily video devotions, tons of podcasts, blogs, our Bible Basics series called Bible Breath, and books and books and resources and more resources to help you in your walk with God. So if you're interested in any of that, just go to timeofgrace.org. A number of years ago, a woman started visiting the church where I was pastoring. And she came pretty regularly, and after a couple of weeks, she asked if, if we could meet. And so I said, sure. And we met, and she started telling me about herself. And I don't know that I was entirely prepared when she looked at me and she said, I see demons. I said, I said, what? She said, I see demons. Like I, I see them wherever I go. I, I see them at my house. I see them... I see them outside, I even see them while I'm sitting in church. They are, they're inside the church. Even while we're worshiping, they're there, I can see them. And then she went on to tell me that she had grown up in an occult family. A family that was very big into the occult, which is the worship of Satan and the worship of demons. And a lot of what she was experiencing as an adult had a lot of roots in her childhood and how she was raised, in fact, her father was uh, had a, held a very high position in all of this, and it had a big impact on how her life how her life was going. But but she assured me that that she could see demons. Whether or not whether or not you believe that's true, we know from Scripture that demons have always been very real from the from the beginning of creation. Is that they were they were created not originally as demons like. Uh, they were created whenever the angels were created, the same time, and the demons, the bad demons, are they were originally good. But they were led away by one main demon, Satan, and, and they followed him, and then they were confirmed in their evilness, and, and they've been demons ever since. And, and we know from Scripture that God has given demons the ability to make an impact on what, goes hap- what happens in the world. You may not have any experience with that, and that's okay. I'm not telling you that you should. Experiences like the one that the, the person I was ministering to, uh, they're, they seem to be less common in America and more common in other countries. But they do happen. And it even happened during the time of Jesus. Time and again in Scripture, we're told that Jesus had run-ins with demons. And demons, they had control over, over people's bodies. Um, they, they made people strong enough to break chains. The, the demons made them, made them blind or mute or had them, they threw them to the ground in convulsions or they compelled them to, to pick up stones and started cutting themselves with it. Demons are also given credit for having an influence on, on what people think and how, and how they act. When Judas was making the deal to go and betray Jesus, it says that Satan entered into him and, and that's part of what compelled him to move forward. In the book of Acts, a man named Ananias was lying to the Apostle Peter, and the Apostle Peter saw right through it. God gave him that ability, and he said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart? But demons, demons are real. But demons know something. They also know that Jesus is real. And we see that time and again in Scripture. Just a couple of examples. In Matthew chapter 8, when Jesus was faced with a legion legion of demons, Jesus said the word go and... And they went. Or in Matthew 12, when a man was possessed by a demon and he was blind and mute as a result, it said, Jesus, he, he healed him, and, and he was. In Matthew chapter 17, there was a demon-possessed boy, and it says that Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and he was healed at that very moment. In Luke chapter 4, there were many who were possessed by demons, and it says that Jesus laid his hands on each one of them, and he healed them. Demons are real, but so is Jesus. And he's always more powerful than them. I got to see that in a very unique way. The woman who came into my church and, and let me know that she could see demons, she was, she was tormented in a lot of different ways by demons. And one time after, after we had met a couple of times and after I discovered that there were other pastors who had worked with her previously, she was... It was during a time where she was especially troubled and I was sitting down with her and with another pastor who had worked with her previously. And as we were talking, the um, kind of the, 
what you might imagine as the stereotypical demon possession things started happening. The, uh, the temperature uh, drastically changed and, and her voice changed very dramatically. And she started talking in ways that just, that just were not her and started doing things, bodily movements and things like that, that just, that were very highly, highly unusual. And as this began, my, my friend who was a pastor who had ministered to her before, he took something out of his pocket. It was a piece of paper that he had had in his inside pocket and he unfolded the piece of paper and he showed, he showed the piece of paper to the demon and the demon stopped immediately. Not because it was a special piece of paper, but because of what the piece of paper represented. It was, it was actually a photocopy. It was a photocopy of the woman's baptismal certificate. The certificate that her family had received on the day that she was baptized. And that baptismal certificate was a reminder of something to that demon. In Galatians chapter 3, it says, All of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. That piece of paper was a reminder to the demon that that, that woman was as much a part of God's family as Jesus Christ himself. And that as such, God held her. And God's grip on anything, just as Jesus himself showed time and again, is always stronger than the grip that anything else in life has on a person, even a demon. Demons are real, but so is Jesus.